can go touch myself. It's okay. He has that effect on women. Right, ladies? Kevin Bree, ladies and gentlemen, give it up. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, ladies. How are we doing? Thank you. Thank you. Hi, guys. Matt Cohen's in the house. Rob Benedict's here. Some people call him Rob Benedict, some people know him as God, whatever you want to call him. Bye, bye, bye. 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 <laughs> I have to always say this because this is like that rich thing that he always does. Bye, bye. A round of blood curdling screams. <laughs> Did we enjoy karaoke this night? It just goes like, oh. <laughs> like, would there be stage direction ever if you're doing a horror movie? Like, you saw him and you curdled? It would if I were playing the part. That's true. <laughs> I tend to curdle in the face of the theater. I would like to make a horror film called Curdle. The, the Curdle. <laughs> <laughs> Run for your lives. Everybody, it's just out to mark curdle up. <laughs> We're not making any sense, but that's real. Cool. Matt Cohen is the Curdle. They call him Ronald McCurdle. <laughs> and once again, this is going nowhere. It's going everywhere. It's going. It's going. Coming soon to a theater near you. Yeah, I'm gonna, don't spill your Curdle. Should I answer some questions now? No. So you should have the Curdle. Don't shy away from the Curdle. Come on. Ask us something about the new movie, Curdle, or the follow-up, Curdle 2. Oh, Curdle 2 is my favorite. Curdle 2, the... Curdle 3, still curdling. <laughs> Curdle 4, the curdling. Then they reimagine the entire series with Curdle 5, we're back at the Curdle. Right. And then the series spin-off, Curdles. You do every one of the movies and the series. You can't do Curdles without Ronald McCurdle. <laughs> Ron, Ron, Ronald, Ronnie and Donnie McCurdle. <laughs> yeah, but I get killed in the first one. The first goes back and the third one's still curdled. I'm already sweating. We haven't even started yet. This is not a movie. It's great. Ah, hashtag Curdle it up. Yeah. <laughs> hashtag, and this might be crossing the line, but hashtag Curdled Lives Matter is all I'm saying. <laughs> Sorry! It's relevant, okay? It's what's going on. If you don't like it, plug your ears. I'm kidding, don't. I'm apologizing. Ask a question and save me. I don't think it's gonna save you, but I had a really great time at karaoke last night. Yes, you did! And, and, my friend, right here, had an even better time because... Because... <laughs> He's like... <laughs> I know, I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> it's the longest, the longest question. Okay, so here's the important part. You said, when you were carrying my friend Chantel behind me, oh. down the stairs yesterday, they were married now. Yeah. And so I brought you a ring Great. to give to her today. To what? To give to her. Okay. This is how it happens, guys. What's your friend's name? Chantal. I'm a, I didn't want to ask you. I know, but I didn't want to... I did. My brain was curled up. It was a mess. So, Chantal, the night we met... I'm going to pretend you didn't say that. This has the makings for a beautiful relationship. This is your name. Chantal, the night we met... It was curdelicious. In fact, curdelicious is an understatement. It was curdle tabulous. And when I looked into your face and I scooped you up, I I cur I curdled you into my arms. I can do this all day. I'm doing it the entire day. I thought immediately. I hope. 
I hope that there's a, a lollipop sucker ring backstage somewhere because there's nothing I'd want to do more than put this slightly curdled looking candy onto your hand and make this relationship last until at least the end of this panel. So here today, Chantel, I get down on one knee and I ask you to give me your hand uh, turn it away. I've never done this before. This is the left hand. He did it, he said it one time. To give me your hand and walk through this curdlicious life of me. Sorry, that's a really, really bad choice of phrase. I mean, I'll carry you. You really put me on the spot here. You can roll me through a delicious life. Because you have the most fantastic sense of humor to let me get away with this engagement speech. I would like to say this, Chantel. I'm going to hurry this up. Give me your hand. And it, it is indeed the right size. I knew it. I knew, I knew you were a size. A size candy. And with this ring, Chantel, you and I are forever curds. Thank you for being a good sport. I, I hate to break it to you, but traditionally speaking, marriage is forever, so you're stuck. I'm just sticking to tradition. <laughs> she signed the worst person on earth. You did great, Chantel. But you're stuck with me, so... I'm gonna come back and curse you. Yes. Okay, good. Well, I'm well on my way to a successful marriage, it sounds like. No, that's... If, if that's any information, <laughs> Chantel, you did awesome. So Don't worry, he gets better. He gets better. How much time? <laughs> Where do you want to go on our honey honeymoon? Divorce court? About 40 minutes. <laughs> I don't know. I think an annulment is fine. Okay. Um, creating and destroying marriages. That's the supernatural convention. <laughs> One city at a time. One city at a time. Congratulations. Come on, give it up for our wedding, guys. Jesus, for our mother. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Um, my question is actually for you, Rob. Yeah. Uh, firstly, will we see you again in season 12? And secondly, can you tell us more about Kings of Con? Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, so, uh, I don't know about season 12. They don't tell me anything, even though I've got any things that I would know already. <laughs> I have the slightest idea. Uh, I would love to come back because I had a great time last season. That was so fun. So uh, yeah, it was, it was a blast. So hopefully, at some point. Um, and Kings of Cod is going great. Kings of Cod is a series that Richard Spade and I wrote and produced and are in. And uh, we are editing it right now. And it will be uh, available to watch in mid-October. And yeah. At Comic Con HQ with the new website, Comic Con HQ, cchq.com. And we have 10 episodes, Matt's in it, a lot of our friends here are in it. And uh, we're so excited. I just I can't wait for you guys to see it. I just, I just really can't wait. We're just tickled about the whole thing. So, yeah, so it's all coming up, it's all happening. Questions for Matt. No, no worries. But I thought there would be no marriage. No marriage. Um, last year at Con, I was in a wheelchair and said that you'd been in a wheelchair many times. Stories? Um, let's see. First, the easiest one that pops in my head. Uh, I, before uh, mixed martial arts fighting was as popular as it was, I was about 17 years old. And I thought, oh, this place on the beach is hosting a no-holds-bar fighting match. 
I could drink a couple beers and win. Um, that's, that's never happened to me. <laughs> So I, uh, I did a, I did a fight, and I lost. And a guy, uh, he shattered my ankle, and a bone popped out of the side. And then I went to the hospital by myself. Wait, let me, let me start from the beginning one more time. I, I left at my house that night, my dad, and last thing he said to me, because he was fully against what I was doing, son, don't get hurt. Go to bed. I drove myself to the fight. It was at a nightclub, I should have known. They were serving alcohol to the fighters. I should have known. <laughs> I'm not a good fighter. Should have known. I should have been in a ring fighting another man. So I got in there and he shattered my ankle and then I drove myself to the hospital. And uh, the next day I was in Richard. And that lasted for about eight months. I had reconstructive surgery on my leg. I have uh, a plate and four screws, maybe six screws, I don't know, something together. That's one of my wheelchair stairs. Jeez, man. This will go on forever. What did Dad say? <laughs> he wasn't happy, he didn't say very much. He, he did send me to get my leg set by myself as punishment. Which I don't know if you know what getting a bone set feels like. Um, they put maybe 30 shots of like as something, I guess it was like Novocaine up and down my leg, all on the sides. They were pumping so much Novocaine into my leg actually that there were, it was bubbled up. Oh, God. Um, like every part that inserted the needle, there was like an awkward lump that looked like there was something trying to come out of my leg. They didn't stop. And then they laid me down. They laid me down like this, and they held my leg. And that had nothing to do with the whole body. <laughs> And two male nurses <laughs> held me down, held my face into a pillow, and then they snapped my leg back in and held it while they casted it. And then I stayed like that for a week until they realized it didn't solve the problem in which I had surgery a week later. It was a nightmare. So, it was in a wheelchair. That's a story. Let's move on. Let's <laughs> Let's go. And my wife, she doesn't think I'm a winner, but I'm working on that. I'll send the papers. Uh, um, anyway, so the uh, question is, uh, I was walking, I went into Denny's for some food and uh, turned around and you were on the TV. So I was wondering if you've ever walked into a place and just seen yourself randomly on TV. I have, because I go to the gym and there's a thousand TVs in front of the treadmill and if I go between 2 and 3 p.m. Monday through Friday, <laughs> I try to wear my hat real low because it's not fun to watch yourself on television. It's not. Despite what somebody might think, I hate watching myself. I mean, I, I rather enjoy watching you on television. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. You should convince my wife to like me that much. Which one? My new wife. My new wife. My new wife. Just wanted to make sure. Sorry, Rob. I'm just gonna say this right now. The next question better be for Rob. Matthew, you good. I love it. So in season five, um, the Cupid told Sam and Dean that um, Mary and John used to hate each other before they intervened. I was wondering if you had any thoughts why. They said Cupid said what? That uh, John and Mary used to hate each other. Hate each other? Um, why do you think? <laughs> That's six seasons ago. I would say because uh, John grew into 
into a colossal a-hole. <laughs>
teen lesbian storyline at the time that wasn't told before at that age. And so I think it was huge. It gave a voice to many, uh, you know, gay guys and girls and the, the whole LGBT community. And to ever be part of something that matters like that, you know, especially when we're in entertainment and we're not just throwing stuff out there that's absolute nonsense, you know, we're not making Donald Trump television. Uh, it's, just a, it's just a gift, you know, it's the same thing with Supernatural. I mean, this show is, we all feel the same way, that we're so lucky that we're part of something that has a voice, it's a home for so many people, a home for this big crazy fandom, this big crazy family that we all are together, and it's just fortunate, you know, it could be a lot different, it could be on a show that's just, you know, simple entertainment without a message, without a voice, and it isn't a home for people, so it's just, it's, you just feel lucky. That's, that's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. And one of those women was played by your, your first wife. Yes, my, the, that monumental lesbian was that's my wife now. <laughs> well, it was, but we just got to be married. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, well she's, she's my other wife. Not this <laughs> Chantel, I'm sorry. Maybe after Chantel divorces you. Maybe he will take you back. Hopefully. Hopefully. It's doubtful. I'll show you my best. Good afternoon, guys. Um, uh, I'm a Cornwall Carol Jam Logan Sweet question. Um, hey. Obviously, you're a big Carol Jam fan. Uh, I was wondering, it's kind of multi faceted question. Um, long way, is there any Carol Jam influence when you were writing that song? And what are your, your favourite Carol Jam songs? One well known and one not so well known? Great, great question. I love it. Um, yeah, so uh, Long Way was definitely inspired by Girl Jam. That was definitely during a time, that was written uh, a while ago, but during a time where I was like super into them, you know, singing every time they played. Uh, so for sure that was, uh, a lot of the songs on that album were uh, influenced by uh, Girl Jam. Uh, and, and I think they, you know, more than anything right now, I, I sort of feel uh, their influence on me when I play live because like he's such a great and they're such a great live band and, and he's such a great front man and I find myself kind of channeling that just being inspired by what I've seen him do um, so uh, yeah so that I mean that, that's how I see him sort of inspiring me right now um, and in terms of favorite Pearl Jam song popular uh, would be so man, it's hard to make it just like Sophie's Choice uh, but, uh, 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 oh, well, I don't like, I love, I think it's a popular release, which is the first song on the first album ever, which they play, uh, they play, they start their shows live with that, that's always my dad, it's like goosebumps with it. Part of my thing about Pearl Jam too is like I've always loved them, and also my brother really loves them, and so it's been a bomb, and you know, I, we've been seeing together. So we're, every time we see them, we're like, please start with the release, so they start with the release, uh, so I guess that's my, pop, my the popular song I would say, even though people may not know how that song. Uh, uh, Wishlist is also a great song. But uh, another song that people may not know, the song called Half Full, is like one of my favorite songs ever. And that's like, uh, yeah, that's uh, like a few albums ago. Uh, and, uh, but that's one of my favorites too. Half Full, check that one out. All right, yeah, thanks for the question, man. You. Hi. Hi. Chuck and his absence and, you know, the fact that Chuck just doesn't really seem to care or didn't care about the world. So what can both of you say to defend Chuck? Don't you dare talk about Chuck that way. <laughs> That's the first thing I would say. And then I would say, better watch your back, Dean. <laughs> With Dean, like, right in front of you, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care how pretty you think your mouth is. No. Oh, yeah. You tell him, yo, John. Master, oh, thank you. I'm your dad. Yeah. Lay a weight on that knee, Pete. Ironically, the scene that she's talking about, which I thought Jensen was amazing in that scene, um, it was like tears because, you know, it's like, where have you been? And, uh, and I'm like, I'm not your father, Dean. Don't confuse me with your father. It's an interesting sort of 
straight back, circling it back around to you. Um, but, uh, I, uh, yeah, I mean, I, you know, obviously he's talking to God at that point, and, uh, no, I mean, it's true, you know, it's like, I guess my defense would be, if you look back at the, the footprints, I've been carrying them. <laughs> That's the carry of me. That's why there's only one set of footprints. There's only one set of footprints, but the other set there was like really deep because we were like struggling. <laughs> oh, oh, Jesus! He is as heavy as he looks. And he comes out, back up. <laughs> Jensen's, Jensen's in your arms like this. <laughs>
And then I go, I go, hey Rob, how great is my imaginary friend? We saved all these chicken wings, we don't even feel bad because they weren't fried and battered. It's the best. It's the best imaginary friend ever. Can I have yours? We can share it. Okay, I want to share that I just have to sign up for them. I want them to look up at me and be like, you're so tall. Yeah, you know. <laughs> They'll be like this. They'll be like, Yeah. <laughs> 
we're like three beers deep and we're together. Misha will do that too, and he'll like, he'll like come up to you and I'm like, I've had moments where I'm like, are we doing this? Are we not doing this? <laughs> but don't try that with Mr. Spade. Oh, <laughs> get it. Oh, when you did that scene for you and you got like nose to nose and oh, so I can't believe it. Oh, you guys don't know about that yet. <laughs> you, really will. you better tune in. There's gonna be some Cohen up in space. Face! Oh, um, um, and there's uh, so many weird things that happen. Uh, Sebastian's helped me several times. Oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> but you can't see that. Um, <laughs> I think there's so many crazy times where we've told stories and we've done weird yeah. performances and, and, and improv stuff. You I take think your shirt off. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. There was this time, remember, I don't remember this, was we were in Italy or something, and like somebody said, how would you like pick up a girl if you're walking down the street? I think it was you and I like, sat you down. <laughs> and I started like trying to she had to pick up. Yeah, and it got awkward sometimes does with us. And to the point where we made a date. But yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> the date would never stop. It, it took the whole QA and there was like no other question. And for some reason, like I cut, I was like a British girl. Yeah, you know what? I was like, dude, I was like, oh, look at this little nanny. And I was like, oh, this is weird. Just the weirdest turn down Spain Street. That's kind of sad. I was like, you still got it, Rob. I forgot it was you. Like, well, the ladies still like me. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's a little Italy, weird things happen in Italy, we, we, uh, I put on, uh, high heel red shoes. And I put on my red shoes, like you do. It's always so crazy. Something weird. I don't, I don't know. know. I jump off a chair every convention now. It's just a matter of time until I blow a knee out of spring ankle in front of a thousand people. I've tripped a lot. I've tripped on this stage. It's fun. Yeah. I mean, I dress up like Jon Snow for karaoke. He wears a dress pretty damn weird. That's pretty weird. I start sweating three minutes into that costume. Me too. <laughs> Me too, my man. I'm sure the weirdness will ensue, and, and there'll be more weirdness. Yeah, bring it on. Oh, I'm gonna jot it down in my phone for the next time we ask question. All right, we're almost out of time, so. Hi. Hi. Um, I just, I don't like my voice. Your voice sounds great. <laughs> I just recently figured out what I want to do for the rest of my life, and I want to know when, when you guys figured out when you, what you wanted to do. I was like 16, I, I felt like I, I, you know, I wanted to be an actor. Um, yeah, it was pretty young for me and everybody around me. I was like, don't, don't, don't do that. Because <laughs> I was pretty good in school and like, yeah. And people just like, no, man, no, 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 no. But so I did. That's what I, that's what I, I still don't know, really. I love what I do right now, but. I swear, some days I just want, I want to be a, just a farmer. <laughs> uh, all the aside, I literally consider taking online classes in agriculture, because I just, like, farming? I don't know. I don't know what I want to do. I don't know what I want to do. I, I, tomorrow I might want to be a marshmallow unicorn that throws up chicken with. I don't know. Sure. Alright, you know, that, 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 honestly, that, that's a great point. Like, the fact is, like, whatever you decided you wanted to be, Go try to be that, and if it's working for you, so no, do whatever you do, whatever you uh, feel passionate about, right? It's not, it's not, it's not like you get more than one chance. Yeah, a hundred percent, hundred percent. You can always do anything, and if you don't like what you're doing, stop doing it. Period. At any point in your life, that's great. Are we gonna try to rip through these last couple, or do we not have time? Well, <laughs> well, ask a question fast. Okay. Ask and answer fast. Thank you, Matt, for letting me turn a unicorn horn on you. Amazing experience. <laughs> Second, this is actually for you. Okay. Um, is Painting Kong going to be available in Canada? Because I'll be a very sad Canadian if I donated money and I can't watch it. Yes, yeah, so yeah. Everybody who donated money will be able to watch it. You'll get a special link. And even if you didn't donate money, you'll be able to watch it. They're working on it right now. They're going to make it internationally available to everybody. Next question. <laughs> Establishing themselves as a wear squirrel, if you could be a wear something. So, Matt, what would your wear something be? I, 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 would, I would be a wear Sasquatch. Wear <laughs> Sasquatch. It doesn't make sense. But, uh, I appreciate some of experience on the show. Um, I love uh, your stream and Matt's 
Lisa Cook, John, inside of JDM. Um, I was wondering what the, what was the difference in your approach roles and did Jared mess with you before or less? Or Jared always messes with us, for sure. Uh, messes his face off. Uh, that's part of the program, but we love it. And uh, approach the role. I, I, I just, I got to meet Jeff and Dean, played big, you know, it was a big deal meeting him, so I got to be more like him. Thank you, and I tried to be myself, I guess. We're, we're nice, but we're not terribly patient here at Corn Con. And we're, we're ready, we're ready for some more action. Here, what's something that you'd like to say about him, since you can't, if you don't feel comfortable saying it to his face? I wish he was a happier man. <laughs> I love him dearly. Oh, man. No, no, I have a question. Okay, Rob, did you know in season five when you were filming that you would end up being God in season 11? Well, I knew in the very end of season five after it ended, Kripke told me that I was God, but he also told me that he had no plans to bring me back. So I never thought I'd come back. The very last question ever. Um, what's, what's the worst thing that Jared told you? They once told me that they, they liked my company. <laughs> That is the very last question. There we go, ladies and gentlemen! Thank you so much! Just so sorry I didn't sing out. It takes a little bit of